I wake up with you guys, I send my day with you guys, and I go to bed with you guys. You guys are the best. The most Texas country and red dirt, plus the best of Nashville from 90s to now. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's going out of style, I was thinking. Out of style, stay out of Uvalde Radio. UvaldeRadio.net. Hey, it's Robert Miguel. We're coming at you live from the Briscoe Garner Museum for their Music on the Porch event. Uh, normally, we do this on the um, Play Music on the Porch. In fact, there's a national holiday. Um, but I think that was a couple of weeks ago. There's just so much going on in Uvalde lately that uh, we can't always do everything that the uh, the national calendar tells us to do on the day that they say it. So uh, we're doing Music on the Porch here, providing some free entertainment on the porch, the historic porch of the uh, Briscoe Garner Garner Museum, um, home to John Nance Garner, former uh, vice president of the U.S., and then um, also uh, Dolph Briscoe, former Texas governor. Uh, two great men, uh, born and bred in Uvalde, who did great things uh, serving our nation. So, uh, again, we are here live from noon to 3 p.m. I'm going to be kind of checking in with some live interviews with some uh, some fantastic Texas country regional artists that have uh, decided to stop by and grace us with their presence and share their music and their art and just also kind of soak in some of the great things about Uvalde. Of course, uh, for those outside of the 78801, all you know about Uvalde these days is, is the recent tragedy, and of course, that is uh, now going to be a, a forever part of our DNA. But it is certainly not, you know, the the main takeaway from the from the great city of Uvalde. So we're here uh, to share uh, our community with these awesome Texas country artists that are here. And the first of my guests this afternoon, Mr. James Garland. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Get on close to the mic here. I, yeah. I, yeah, I, Thank I you for having me. I'm so, happy to be here. So you made the trip in from from how far? How how long did you come to get here? Man, uh, six hour drive Ooh. from Conroe, Texas. Conroe. Okay, yeah. cool. So so I, I spent a lot of time in DFW in Dallas. Right. Uh, so it's about a six hour drive uh, from the Metroplex out here lately. Now back in the day when I first started driving in the eighties. It was like more of like a seven, eight hour ride. Right. Because, you know, right. I totally wasn't around yet. Oh, but, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so but it's a trek. It's just long enough to where you got to get out a couple times, stretch the legs, stop at oh, Bucky's, yeah. and, you know, do the oh, thing. Yeah. But I've noticed, man, you're um, you, you're really good on, on the social media. You know, you like to man, post what you're doing, and, you I'm know. Trying. I used to suck at it. Yeah. I'll tell you, I did. And uh, I got linked up with a couple different management teams, and the, and they were like, man, you, you got to be better at social media. And I was like, well, that's just, I'm just not a social Social media, yeah. Like I don't like taking photos. I don't like posting pictures. I don't like doing right. status updates, all this stuff. And they were like, "No, I'm telling you, you need to do it." You know, and I yeah. was like, "All right." So I finally bit the bullet, started doing it, and then noticed that more people were seeing my posts and were coming to shows. It's part of the hustle these days. Yeah, so and, and, and it is. a lot of people they would come up to my shows, you know, and they they'd be like, "Man, you know, we've been waiting to see you, and you know, we just didn't know whenever you're playing. We finally saw you playing around here, and I'm like, well, this is like my fourth time playing here, man. <laughs> like, you know, they go, "Yeah, we've never seen it, you know." So social media definitely makes a difference. It these used days. to be to where you know, in the days of you know the '80s rock bands on Sunset Strip and and you know Music Row in Nashville. You know, you had to make yourself a big, nice, colorful flyer yeah. and post it up on telephone poles. Yeah. Now you got to get on social media. You know, yeah, it's exactly. like it, it's uh, it's all about the hustle, man. You know, so it's a little extra work, but yeah, it usually pays off for you. Right. Yeah. So, I, but I but I, I love what you do. You know, you you show people where you are. You, yeah. know, you take the time to kind of expose people to the to the, your life, your world, That's, yeah. which is kind of hidden different zip codes and different you know city that limits was, and whatnot. That was my lead players. I. <laughs> <That's laughs> awesome. Because we, we have this... Now, he's a gentleman you brought along. Yeah, he's, he's, again, he goes, he's a nice guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, cool. he's fantastic. And uh, it was actually his idea, and he goes, man, you know, uh, you know, we, we have this ritual that whenever we get into a new town, we find the first Mexican joint we can think of. <laughs> nice, it, it looks pretty good, right? And he goes, man, why don't, why don't you post that? Like, you know, this is like something that you enjoy doing and that you like to do. And like today was the first time that people found out I was a history nut because uh-huh. I love museums. So no, that's awesome. honestly, that was one of my selling points. <laughs> they were like, "It's at the Briscoe Garner Museum." I said, well, "That's a museum I ain't been to yet." Well, we got to talk about you being a history buff here in a minute. But let's oh, go yeah. ahead and uh, since you are a, a musician, yes. um, kind of one of the rising stars in Texas country genre, yes. let's go and get into your story, your background. Um, yeah. Where exactly, you know, where were you born and bred, and what led you to pursue country music? So I bounced around a lot uh-huh. as a kid, but the city that I claim being from is cold. Spring, Texas. It's a population of 893 people. Everybody knows everybody. My grandmother still lives there. My dad still lives there. Um, 
I just, just kind of went through life doing construction. I uh, did a little stint in the military, which I usually don't tell people that, but I like you. <laughs> and uh, whenever I got back, I wanted to play guitar, and uh, I had no ambitions outside of just playing guitar. And I found out that writing songs was like a good outlet to let some of the stuff that I was hanging on to out. Ah. I ran into Dagan, and I said, man, will you teach me how to play guitar? Like, I'm not that good at it, and I just want to play. So I come over to sit down and play guitar at his house one day, and he said, well, show me what you know how to do. And I played him a song that I'd written called My Next Mistake. And whenever I got done with it, he goes, man, you need to put a band together. And I was like, no, nah, you know, I'm, I'm not that good. Like, you know, we're not, we're not even going to go down that road. And uh, he goes, no, nah, you, you need to put a band together, man. And I was like, no, nah, you know, so he said, well, come back tomorrow. You know, we'll pick up the guitar lessons. I said, okay, I'll come back the next day. He's got musicians all in the living room. You know, drummer, <laughs> oh, no. keyboard, bass. Threw him into the fire, yeah. huh? And I said, well, what's going on here? He goes, well, this is your band. We're going to rehearse. And I was like, well, we'll play the eight songs I know how to play. Wow. Well, you know, six months of rehearsal, we go do our first show in Livingston, Texas. And uh, we opened up the show with Folsom Prison. And the crowd went nuts. And after that, I was like, oh, I can do this. No, just your yeah. speaking voice. I feel like you can nail Folsom Prison. Oh, I love Folsom, man. Like, yeah. and, uh, I'm, I'm actually a big Johnny Cash fan. Uh, right. Get Rhythm is my favorite song. And uh, <laughs> so, so Okay, so your lead guitarist, he paid, he pretty much just bullied you into starting a he band. Did. Yeah? He's, he's a giant bully for as sweet <laughs> as he is. And Even if that he's a genius and recognizes his talent, <laughs> and maybe he'll be like the next, you know, William Morris agent. That's what he says. <laughs> but I say he's a bully. So, so now how long have you guys been doing this? You know, oh, professionally now, I think going on five years. Wow. And in five years, we've played music festivals. We've toured all over Texas. We've gone into Oklahoma. I've done little stints up in Wisconsin, just having fun. Uh, we played around a little bit Louisiana. Yeah, we really get around. What, what are some of the highlights as far as people maybe that you shared the stage with yet Ooh, so far? I think... They're, they're actually the most two recent. Okay. In Hockley, Texas, at 2920 Roadhouse. I got to go open up for one of my childhood heroes, which was Sammy Kershaw. Oh, that's awesome, man. And yeah. the, the biggest thing that could have ever happened is whenever I come off the stage, his band is, like, praising what we did. And, that's and fantastic. Sammy gives me, like, a thumbs up. And at the end of his show, he comes off stage, and he goes, man, did you write all them songs? And I said, yes, sir, I did. And he goes... Man, you got a great sound, a good style to you. Wow. He said, keep doing what you're doing. You're that's a high honor, out. man. And that's what I said. I, I told him, I said, Mr. Kershaw, you have no idea what that means to me. And, <laughs> and, then, and sometimes you just need that validation yeah. from the legends and, to keep you going, right? I told Dagan that. I said, dude, I said, I've never took a compliment so far to heart than yeah. I did that day. And then a couple weeks later, we opened up for the legendary John Conley. Wow. At the same venue. And, and I, oh my God, same thing. They get done, you know, and they're, his band's going on stage, and the band comes up to me, and Mr. Conley comes up to me, and, did you write all them songs? Yeah, all of them except for Dust on the Fossil, but, you know, David Lee Murphy stole that one from me. Let me interject you guys. If you're listening at home here in the 78801, come out and hear music on the porch. This young man here, uh, Mr. James Garland, performing uh, here per, probably a little bit after we're done talking. So you got time to come on out. 333 North Park Street. We've also got Steve Anthony and a young man out of Carrizo Springs, a local to this area, uh, Garrett Talamantes Clan, and some local talent from uh, Uvalde High School Choir Girls. So uh, come on out here for re uh, free refreshments. Tour the museum and see James Garland debut in Uvalde, right? Yeah, debut. So let's in go ahead. Let's go ahead and talk about your your first impression of Uvalde. I know you were in Maroon, so thank you yes. for honoring our, our our 21 lost and uh, and just start you know our helping strength our city Uvalde strong. And I waited until I got to Uvalde. Uh, you got a store called Rock and R. Rock and R, yeah, Western Wear, yeah. And that's where I went and bought the shirt. Very very and cool, man. So I, I told Dagan on the way up here. I said uh, I really want to support these guys, but I also want to. I don't own a Marine shirt, uh -huh. so I said, if we're going to buy one, I want to buy it in you. Guys. Thank you, man. Thank you for shopping local. Yeah, we yeah. appreciate that. So yeah. we, we hit up Rock and Arrow, went in there and got this, got this button up this morning. I was so happy to get it and put it on. Uh, it's the last one they had in my size, so I figured it was God meant to be. There, you know? awesome. <laughs> hey, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, trying to get some good Mexican food. Have you had oh. lunch yet, or are you going to do that yeah, later? So as soon as we leave here, there's a... I can't pronounce it. Is it, it Jalisco? It's this one right here on the corner. Uh, the, the Jalisco de Herrera Dera or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I can't yeah. pronounce it either. So, I'm, like, you know, I'm brown on the outside. Why that's the one we coconut. keep hearing about. That's the one to go yeah. to. Yeah. That's, that, so, I, so, I was going to suggest it if yeah. you didn't already have it. So, so. If, if everybody comes out and parties down with us, whenever we get down here, we'll all go have a giant feast over that's there. That's right, there. man. Yeah. So, some good uh, Jalisco and maybe some margaritas or something like yeah, that. So, too. yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to be pleasantly surprised on that place. Yeah. Um, so, of course, now let's go ahead and talk about the museum. Your history buff. 
yes. and you, you you just had a, and a good time here at the. Oh yeah, I loved walking around watching the videos, and I, I didn't realize how huge it was whenever I pulled up and we you know, finally walked inside. I was like, oh my god, this place is huge. Yeah. And then I think one of the coolest things was seeing the blueprint back there on the wall that That's I awesome. wanted to take a picture. And then hopefully one day when I make it, I can have this house rebuilt. Replicated. And, uh, but no, it was fantastic. And then learning that, uh, not Mr. Gardner, but... Mr. Uh, Briscoe. Briscoe uh -huh. had, during his term, didn't raise taxes, add taxes to Texas, nothing like that. I was yeah. like, oh my God, I just found a whole new respect for a new man. Yeah, the most conservative <laughs> Democrat ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God. But watching the videos up there on the TVs to really learn some in-depth stuff, man, it was fantastic. Looking around at the gavels and the, you know, the signed baseballs and the pictures that they have from the old paintings and oh my god, it's just hey, maybe one day they'll add a wing for Matthew McConaughey. I don't right. Know. right. <laughs> so and then speaking of food, you know, they got the stove back here, like yeah. the original stove. Oh, I was just blown away. Oh, well, man, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you again for coming out here to be a part oh, of this of event. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about your your new song. You've got a, a single to radio that we're, that's climbing up our charts as well as the uh, yep. the other uh, regional charts. It's called Be Your Fool. We're going to play that so we can get to, uh, taking care of some business here at okay. the event. But uh, give us a little backstory on Be Your Fool. Yeah, Be Your Fool. So speaking of my bully lead player, okay. <laughs> I was over at his house and he was arguing with his wife. And I was sitting in his room. We were getting ready to sit down and go over some other songs that I'd written and get them, get them ready for shows, you know, stuff like that. Start debuting them at the gigs. And uh, I just, I don't like listening to arguing. So I started strumming my guitar. You know, as loud <laughs> as I could, trying to drown it out. And wow. I shut the bedroom door, you know. And, I came up with the chord progression for Be Your Fool, and yeah, you know, the whole time I'm sitting here playing it, I'm kind of enjoying the progression, and I just started building line, you know, lines and lyrics as loud as I could, and you know, that duffel bag of mine gets easier to load every time, and then that's where it kind of came from, and uh, that's where the first verse came from, was just the fight that I was listening to. And then from there, uh, you know, obviously they quit fighting, they heard me and they're singing and playing, and uh, they quit fighting, and uh, later on I go home, and I keep playing the song over and over and over, and I just start thinking about the relationships that I've been in, and things uh -huh. that I've been through, and then the song just kind of took off from there. To wow. How many times have I been the fool in the relationship, you know, of, oh, you know, my friends are telling me that she's running around and she's doing this, and I'm like, y'all are crazy, she'd never do that. And right, The whole right. time you're getting made out to look like a fool. And it was just kind of that, that last been straw. Been there, done that, man. Yeah. I totally relate. Yeah, 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 that last straw that you're just like, you know what, I ain't going to be your I love you to death, but I ain't going to be the fool here. What a great story, man. Well, let's go and get it on the air again. This is UvaldeRadio.net. We have got James Garland here. He's performing at the Briscoe Garner Museum. We're here till 3 p.m. Uh, we're just going to have some great live Texas country music on the porch at the Briscoe Garner. Come see us at 333 North Park Street. Check out some history, learn some stuff, and uh, get some entertainment, too. We'll call it edutainment uh, <laughs> an afternoon of that. So this is called Be Your Fool. This is James Garland, and this is UvaldeRadio.net. <laughs> Out on the town, I 
I just sat back shooting them down It's the last time my tears will hit the ground So don't you wait up for me Cause tonight is the night I set me free And baby I swear this time I'll leave But you can keep those records too And I'll keep the lessons I've learned from you And just know I'll always love you And I won't be old But you can keep those records too And I'll keep the lessons I've learned from you And just know I'll always love you But I won't be your fool Robert Miguel, once again, live at the Briscoe Garner Museum, 333 North Park Street. Come out and see us. We're here till 3 with music on the porch. Thank you to Rochelle and everybody here at the Briscoe for uh, inviting us out here to uh, participate in this cool event. Just live music on the porch, a historic porch, one of the coolest places in beautiful Uvalde, Texas. You just heard James Garland. It's called Be Your Fool. It's like in the top 20 on our station and uh, climbing up the Texas regional charts. I've got, uh, once again, James Garland right here. I'll make some noise. Right. It's just a couple of us here. But uh, you got your guitar, man. So yeah. if you're cool to play something, let's do that. But first, let's go ahead and uh, backtrack on the song Be Your Fool. You talked about the, the inspiration. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, the um, the recording process and the musicians. Uh, did you did you, did your band do it? Did you get some Nashville help? You know, some... No, so this one was actually the band. Oh, wow. Very uh, cool, yeah. man. Uh, it was my drummer, my bass player, my, my guitar player. Uh, Chad Malden produced it, which is fantastic. Uh, it was funny because whenever the song, whenever we initially, whenever I initially wrote it and brought it to the studio, he was like, yeah, we're going to have to change it. And I was like, why? And he goes, it sounds like a journey song. <laughs> and because uh, the way it started was... Well, yeah, right. Yeah. And it sounded yeah. like a journey song. And I was like... It sounded oh, like yeah. the journey yeah. song. Yeah, and I was like... And I didn't hear it. Yeah. You know? And he goes... And I was like, well, I'm not playing a, you know, a C-sharp minor. I'm playing a, a C-power. And he goes, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> and, I was like, yeah. and, uh, and he was like, so we're going to change that so we don't get you sued. And I was <laughs> like, all right. So what we did was instead of starting off with the palm unit, we started off with the loud strong. Gotcha. You know, and just kind of went like Smart that. Smart guy. Yeah. And, and <laughs> after, after playing it for another buddy of mine, Jim Salter, down there in southeast Texas, he goes, yeah, I like the new way, man. I, don't, <laughs> I was like, all right, well, I guess we, I guess he knew what he was doing, you know. So, but he's fantastic. We did Be Your Fool with him. We did Run With Me with him. So a lot of great work that came out of that studio. He's worked with a lot of, a lot of top-notch guys, too. Now, as far as the music goes, um, are you uh, like a streaming guy? Do you, do you put out albums, CDs? Uh, how, how do you release your music? Yeah, so it's a combination. Uh -huh. So what we'll do is like we're working on the album now, Man in the Mirror. And what we'll end up doing is we'll throw three or four singles out, kind of in succession, like about six weeks apart. Right, right. And then drop the album. Nice. So, But what I want to do is I want to have a promo code to where when the first single gets dropped, if you have that promo code and you did go ahead and pre-order the album, you'll go ahead and get it. And you don't have to wait for four singles right, to drop right. before you get the album. That's nice, yeah. So, yeah, so the, the diehard fans can just go ahead and have the album. You know, like they don't that. have to like wait that, on the man. single. Well, that's fantastic. Now, so for those who want to, uh, that, are, that are just tuning in again, we've got James.
Garland here. Uh, where can they? Where's the easiest place to find your music and Ooh. and get caught up? Anywhere, on you? anywhere. Right. You just type in James Garland. Garland. Yeah, if you type in James Garland music, everything will pop up on Google. Right. On. Uh, you can go to jamesgarlandmusic.com. You can go to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pandora. I think yeah, it's, there's stations on Pandora that are solely James Garland. Wow, that's yeah, nice. It's awesome. Yeah, it's Very awesome. Good. <laughs> and uh, it's so funny too. And uh, Google Play Music, iTunes, just anywhere where you like to listen. See, I'll just put that in the Google search bar: James yeah. Garland Music. Find it and enjoy. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do something live. You said you yeah, gave you a song for us here. So uh, I haven't played this one for any of the radio. For, hold on, let me close the doors here so that yeah, yeah, sure. we, don't, we don't bleed in the appearance outside. Right now. I don't think it's going to close all the way. Oh, I'll that's leave it on that. But uh, yeah, so okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I haven't played this one for any of the stations yet. Uh, but it's going to be on the upcoming record. Uh, my hope is that it's the next radio release. I know, I know David Gilligan, my radio promoter, he wants it to be the next radio release. Right on, all right. So it's called Hanging On For Dear Life. Appreciate it.
Garland, live on UvalderRadio.net. Thank you, sir. That was fantastic, Thank man. You. Well, I can tell you what, we're going to play that out of the box. <laughs> yeah, when I come across it. my desk, you got at least one ad in Southwest Texas yeah, I on the regional radio there. So, uh, shout out to, to David Gilligan for yes. sending you out here and getting us hooked up. Man, it's been a really an honor and pleasure yes. getting to know you. Thank you so much for honoring our town, wearing maroon, shopping local, and getting ready to get some really good Tex Mex in you. Oh, so, yes. uh, and, yeah. and yeah, just thank you for soaking in a little bit of Uvalde, man. I hope oh, you, I love you it, really man. enjoyed it. We have a really fantastic opera house as well really? that you need, need to swing by. And actually, they're open today because there's a, a performance this afternoon. Really? Uvalde Grand Opera House, right there in our main square of Town Plaza, built in 1836. Second oldest functioning opera house in Texas. What? Yeah. So, and the one that's oldest technically has been renovated like 70%. Right. It's weird that we, like, like the whole front is like fake. You know what I mean? Or, or I think right. the front is the real part and the rest of it. So, really, pound for pound, you know, brick by brick, we're right. the most legit opera so house. So, question on this. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. If I get enough fans out here in New Valley that are willing to come out. We will, we can book you at the opera house. Yeah. yeah, yeah right, come yeah, on. Sure. Yeah. We, we actually do. We have, we've had a hard time. We have a, a series that we call Texas Country at the Crossroads. Okay. So, the opera house is set on highways 80 and 90, which we in locally like to call the Crossroads of America, right. two of the hot, longest highways in, in the great uh, nation. Right. So, uh, yeah, so we do a thing called Texas Country of the Crossroads. We've had um, Jenny Del Lord come out, oh, September yeah. Moon, we've had Kinfo, T Brothers, Raglan, a lot of, a lot yeah. of the bands that we play. I uh, do like showcases at the Opera House. We'd love to get you on one of those. Yeah. Again, we're taking a break from them because we had the pandemic and then we had, you know, the tragedy here in town. So things have been a little touch and go in Uvalde, but we're wrapping back up, man. Life is kind yeah, of, we're trying on. to get to normal as much as possible so we'd love to get you a, be a part of that again it's James Garland music just look for that yeah. find music there and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go and go back to regular programming we've got some uh, lovely Uvalde High School uh, some, some ladies from the Uvalde High School Choir performing right now on the porch we got James Garland you're going on next yeah. then we got Steve Anthony and then Gareth Talamantes some live free music here at the uh, uh, Briscoe Garner Museum 333 North Park Street if you're Uvalde and you know exactly where it is so uh, we're going to take a break here get back into our regular programming James thank you so much Thank you for Appreciate you being here. And this is UvaldeRadio.net. UvaldeRadio.net. We are Uvalde Strong. Uvalde Radio. UvaldeRadio.net. Hey, it's Robert Miguel. We are live at the Briscoe Garden Museum once again, interrupting your regular schedule, Leo, scheduled broadcast uh, to bring you this kind of break in, man. Um, live from the Briscoe Museum at 333 North Park Street. We just heard from James Garland. He's on stage. I say stage, but he's on the porch. It's all music on the porch uh, here at the Briscoe Garden Museum. And it's uh, just a cool little event, man. Free refreshments. Uh, you can check out the historic building, learn a little bit, get some entertainment out there. Like I said earlier, edutainment at its finest and uh, it was c- kind of fun to learn that James who's uh, performing now is a bit of a history buff so he had a really good time here at the Briscoe Garner Museum. I am here now with another gentleman who's performing as well who makes the trip through Uvalde apparently from time to time if not often and uh, we got him to kind of pull over and uh, help us out with this event. Not only is he helping out just kind of plugging in wires and doing sound <laughs> for us but he's about to perform live and I tell you what um, he has got one of my personal favorites that's in rotation on UvaldeRadio.net. When, when this came across my desk, I thought it was like a Joe Diffie cover or something like that. Um, but it uh, turns out it's a great original piece, uh, and it's climbing up the Texas charts. And this guy's also got some other great stuff on other charts as well, too. So uh, please welcome Mr. Steve Anthony. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Uvalde. Thank you, Robert. Now, it's great to be here, man. I, like I said, I come through so often, and, uh, to you know, I always... Uh, it's a real uh, treat. You know, I, I looked at a picture of Dolph Briscoe on my dad's wall. He, wow. My dad was postmaster over in Caldwell for a long time. Oh, okay. And so we always had a picture of Dolph Briscoe on, on his wall in, in his office. So he got to meet him That's at, awesome. at one time in his life. So it's almost like a personal thing you yeah. know, for me to be here and so now be involved in this. Have you ever actually visited this museum? I've never been here to the museum. No, yeah, so I, mean, I just go by on the highway about the time I'm, I'm about halfway my to where I'm going when I get through here. And, we, we talked about this briefly when I was on with James earlier, but, you know, you know Uvalde, and I, I have a, a real heart for tourism. I, I was born and raised here, and I went and did big-time radio in Dallas for, like, 20, 30 years, and then came back here to, you know, to kind of whittle wood and do the small-town life, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I... 
I just have a heart for letting people know what how this kind of little hidden jewel in Southwest Texas. We got this cool stuff going for us, like a vice president, you know yeah. what I mean, and a Texas governor and a world class Hollywood actor. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. most, there you most, go. Most yeah. people know about Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, oh yeah. But, but um, you know, and and being that that's been my mission here for the last several years in U Valley Radio. Um, you know, now nowadays most people know Uvalde for the tragedy. Uh, so, so we're definitely on the map now, and, yeah. and not in the most flattering light, um, unfortunately. But um, it is. It's. I just again, I love reminding people that we have these cool things: a historic opera house, these uh, uh, a museum that honors these two great men. Uh, so, thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for, like I said, yeah. you know, pulling over and <laughs> instead of going out to Del Rio or wherever. Yeah, uh, Lime so, Tree. Lime, okay. Lime so, so, tree. So, so, tell me, what, yeah, tell me about your your ranch and how wh- how and why you come through Uvalde occasionally. Well, I have. I, it's been about eight years now uh, that uh, I bought. Uh, Everybody always talked to me about getting on deer leases all my life. And uh-huh. I said, well, you know, I never want a deer lease. I, I'd rather own something if I'm going to go out. So uh, I, I'm, I'm in the stone business. My, I own my own company, and, and we do stone work okay. for oil field research. Wow. And uh, it kind of brought me out to this area because of the Eagle for Shale, uh-huh. real predominantly out there in that area. And I said, well, you know, it would be nice to own a little piece of this. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I found a great deal on a piece of property out there, and and I bought up a little more property since I've uh, since I've owned that. So I, I'm up to about owning about 500 acres nice. out there on the I'm, I'm right on the Rio Grande River. I got about a mile of Rio Grande River frontage in the county on the Lake Tree Canyon. So wow. I got a really beautiful place. I'm blessed. So now how much how much time do you spend there? And we're we're we're, we're I, I guess you know on a, on a calendar of 365. Where do you spend your time? Well. Spend my time running my business mostly, <laughs> and, and of course in the music business. So, uh-huh. in the last uh, three or four years, I've spent an immense time in the studio. Uh-huh. Okay. I've done four albums in the last four years. That's crazy, so, right? Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, uh, so it's it's hard to find any spare time. But when I go to the ranch, I, I usually go. You know, it's a long drive. It takes it's about a six hour drive. So. I'll go out and I'll stay for uh, three or four days at a time. And uh, this last time I was out there for opening dove season, of course. Right, and, right, yeah. yeah and, and so I just went and stayed eight days. So, well, man, it's fantastic that, that you're familiar with us and that you actually like said you actually kind of pulled over and doing. Uh, yeah. So this is your first performance in New Valley. In New Valley, yeah, it is. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, we've got Steve Anthony here um, making the trip, uh, stopping in New Valley for our music on the porch event uh, with the Briscoe Garner Museum. Y'all still got time to come see him live. You're going to love what you hear. Again, like I said, uh, you've got one of my favorite songs that's currently on our playlist now, Steve. I'm going to go and say it. You're no spring chicken. You know, no. you're not a young kind of guy jumping, you know, no, no, hit, no. hitting music for the first time. Right. So go ahead and give me your story. Um, you said four albums in the last four years. Was there music in your younger years that you returned to? Or is this kind of like one of those bucket list things where you're like, hey, you know what? Go and live once. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and jump on, you know, yeah. pursue this. No, I've been, uh, I've been playing music all my life. I started playing guitar when I was 10 years old. Wow. And 15 years old, I was in my first bands and... Uh, all through high school, and and uh, I didn't go to college because I I went out and worked for a living, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you know we we'd play three or four nights a week. I've been on the Holiday Inn tour uh, oh, that was uh, six nights a week, where you just play six nights a week. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course they you know they feed you. They we didn't make a lot of money, but uh-huh. but we we got well taken care of. And we you had rooms, places, man. And, yeah, 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 and see all these places. Yeah. So I got to see a lot of places on the Holiday Inn tour. And uh, from that, I just said, you know, it's, uh, I kind of grew up in that dance hall uh, mm-hmm. when the dance hall, South Texas dance halls were so big. And right, right. I said, you know, I got to get in here and, and get me some of this. And, and it was just a lot of fun to be out there playing. Uh, we'd play three or four times a week. And, you know, we were playing to 1,000 people, 1,500 people in these dance halls and led me to Gillies in Houston and, and, uh, Several of the big nightclubs, Armadillo Ballroom, and and I, I can't even uh, East Bernard Riverside Hall. There were just so many big dance halls. Right, right. In that in that South now, Texas. Now, now were you were you a player with a band or I, I you was do always, your own thing? I was, was always a singer uh-huh. and played played the lead guitar. Okay, but I was always part. Of, you know, we we for a long time our band. I had a band called Southern Comfort. Right, right. Okay, which which did really well. 
uh, we got big. Is that the same one with Dale Phillips? No, no, no. different because it's a few other company. Yeah, there was. Uh, okay. but we did make it to Nashville uh-huh. and got an album cut in Nashville back in the '90s and uh, got to tour down in South America wow. over that record. And and so yeah, I've been around. Uh, so so obviously you, you, you've been around the block a few times. Was there a, was there a big break and then and then here I took a break. My last my last job, I played guitar with. I'd been on the road for about 10 years straight with Southern Comfort Uh and we just we had some internal strife and and it just ended up falling apart Uh, so I I just took a little time uh, went and played guitar with a few acts I played with David Kirsch I don't know if you remember David Kirsch played with his first road band Uh, did a lot of touring with David uh, and from David, I went to Johnny Bush and played guitar for Johnny Bush, the, the legend. Played great Johnny Bush. Yeah, yeah the last great. Years, yeah. I mean, what, what an awesome opportunity, you know, yeah. with such great players in that band. And to know that I was part of it, it that, was, that wow. was probably the most coolest part, you know, of my musical career right there. That's right. Until now, of course, yeah. you know, and, and getting to fulfill my dream. So after Johnny Bush, I took a little break and... I just, I was burnt out. I said, you know, well, I, I've done this. I've had success. I've been uh-huh. on the bottom. I've been up close to the top. I said, it's time to take a little break. Well, hey, well, let's talk about the top real quick. What are some of the most memorable, uh, n- not in your current, you know, um, current, I guess, incarnation yeah. of what you're doing, but back back in the, what, I guess it's called the glory days. Yeah, yeah. Well, what we, what yeah. are a couple of great memories you have from those uh, games? We got to uh, play with Alabama, opened up a show nice. with Summit in Houston for Alabama, yeah. played with the Judds. Uh, uh, I bet that really, Steve, I bet, I bet those memories with the Judds are, are really awesome. important to you now because awesome. of the loss of Naomi yeah, recently. Yeah. Ricky Skaggs, uh, I don't probably done a dozen shows with Steve Warner. And wow, I always loved doing the shows with Steve Warner. What a, you know, what a great guy. Just loved him and uh, Eddie Raven. Uh, oh, got that's a name I haven't heard in a minute. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got Mexico. Eddie Raven. Uh, Got to meet Brooks and Dunn. Got to meet them. Uh, I didn't ever get to play with them, but we. Uh, oh man! Well, that's a heck of a it resume. So, so many, so many openings that we got to do for big shows. So on the other end of it, is there anybody that you'd still love to show the stage with opening act? You know, you know. I mean, we all would all love to say, you know, Willie or Garth or whatever. But if somebody like a realistic something that you might you would love. To well, get. you know, I'd love to play with Steve again with okay. Steve Warner. You know, it, it was always a treat. He's such a great musician and, and talent and. And just a great person, you know. He's just fun to be around. So, well, let me ask you something about as, as far as being your. You, I guess you could safely say you're an elder statesman in the Texas country music in the scene. Country, yeah. So you've you've been around and you've seen it because it really wasn't a, there wasn't a the way the the current the way the charts and the networking works since since Dave Smith and the T three R and certain things. It, it, there's kind of a little machinery, not unlike the way the Nashville music machine works. Yeah. It's a smaller, it's a smaller scale, but Texas is a big old state. But it's a so it's so, it, so it's a big it's a big deal too. Um, what what are your thoughts on you know coming from that '90s era where you know er, where everybody was trying to be Nashville, yeah. and then to the now where we can kind of squarely be Texas country artists, correct? And kind of maintain a pretty good you know uh, touring <laughs> thing and radio support. It's kind of our own little yeah. thing. Well, how, what are your feelings on that? Whole oh, I love I love yeah. this Texas world. I mean, yeah. we, we should have done this years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> we shouldn't have waited so long to get. But uh, it's a great market. Uh, there's so many great artists just in this Texas market alone. You know, uh, versus the Nashville. You know, Nashville just keeps spitting out these yeah, yeah. these artists. One, you know, and, and that there's something to do with your song. You you kind of you kind of uh, chime in on that on your song, which we'll play here in a minute. Um, as far as your uh, Texas country contemporaries, uh, some older, some younger. Who are some of your favorites? Who and even maybe some of the younger ones that are that are really kind of the, the spearheaders right now. Do uh, you got any favorites um, that, in, that you're in, into? in the Texas country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. specifically Texas red dirt. Well, you know? well, well, well. I, I really don't pay a lot. I guess Willie. Really, Dale, I guess of all you know, Willie, I love always, always love Willie. Legend, yeah. You know, such uh, such uh, creative writing skills, and uh, of course Aaron Watson. I'm friends with Aaron, uh-huh. and uh, I get to talk to Josh Ward all the time. We work in the Thanks, same Josh, studio, okay. so That's cool. I like Josh a lot. Uh, he's got some really good songs, and uh, there's some new guys coming up that are young. Uh, and, you know, I just get to see so many different artists over there in, in uh, Rosewood, being uh-huh. able to work in Rosewood Studios. And uh, I, I can't say that, you know, I, I guess my all-time favorite artist of all 
that overshadows everybody is Alan Jackson. Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> I mean, high five. Brother. He's my favorite country artist of all time yeah, as well. Yeah, always. Yeah, I mean, just, he's just the perfect yeah, blend of, yeah. of, of, of legit country, you know, with respect for what came before, but not afraid to kind of just... You know, in the '90s, he just pushed the envelope just, just enough to put his just enough. put his, his spin on it, but respecting yeah. that traditional sound. Yeah. That's yeah. A, and and still and now, you know, he's a champion for you know all the values and tradition yeah. of true country music. He, so, he really is. And, and you name drop him in a song, so we'll, we'll put that on there too. Uh, again, we've got Steve Anthony here. Made the trip to Uvalde for our music on the porch event. Um, let's go ahead and I guess uh, let's talk about your. You also do gospel music. Uh, let's touch on that real quick. And you've got a song currently number two on the gospel charts. Uh, currently number two. I've had uh, three, really, I've had three in a row number one singles on the CDX uh, National Gospel Chart. That's awesome. And, you know, the first one we released, we, we released it as a country single uh, called Stop and Smell the Roses. And it, it was just one of those life story kind of things, really positive message. And uh, it kind of floated around on the Texas charts and... Uh, uh, Joe Kelly from CDX Nashville called my publicist and said, hey, you need to release this to the gospel chart and let Debbie Randall push this thing for you. And, and of course, she got it and it went to number one on the gospel chart. That is fantastic. And yeah. so after that, I said, well, you know, this, this is, uh, I like this. So we just, uh, I've been, uh, I kind of went in now go to the studio with a little bit different uh, Overlook on on what I'm going to produce when I go to the studio, you know, because I'm going to always keep producing those gospel songs. Right, because right. They're in my heart, you know. I, I get to sing in church. I do uh, an acoustic set uh, over in uh, Caldwell at the local Catholic that church. That was going to be one of my questions. Yeah. As far as a, a man of faith, um, let's, let's talk, expand upon that a little bit. What, what was your, were you reared in the church? Was it, was I, it something I, that, did God deliver you out of some... No, no, he didn't deliver me. <laughs> my parents delivered me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said, boy, you're going to yeah, Sunday. You, you don't care. I don't care how you stay. If you stay up all night on Saturday, right. you're still going to church on yep. Sunday morning. Yep, absolutely. And, that's a great and, way to be. You know, we pray before meals. We pray after meals. We pray when we go to bed. And we pray when we get up and be thankful. And, and you know, God's been a great part of my life. And 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 I, I know that's why he's given me health and lets me continue this music uh, uh Avenue that I've been on all my life, and and we just keep going with it. So, well, man, what a great it's, story! It's yeah. I get to go. You know, my dad was always singing in the choir in the Catholic Church, and for me to go in now, I think he'd be real proud of me. And and uh, for going in and doing, you know, I do acoustic set and uh, do I sing all the mass parts and just sing the whole mass uh-huh. just as a solo artist, and and I have a lot of fun doing it. It it helps my discipline level. It's uh, you know, singing from sheet music is different than just going out and singing yeah, no, at true. bars yeah, yeah. and honky tonks. It keeps those real, true musical chops it, up. It does. Get all that theory in your head and all that stuff. <laughs> so. Well, man, you know, I'm, I'm loving everything we're hearing about you. It sounds like, you know, you know we could be besties. Uh, so uh, I respect the faith, man. I love the music. Uh, it's cool to see you, you know, living your dream. Yeah. Um, so... What what is the end game? Are you just doing this for fun, seeing how far you can go? No, or do you have it? Are you like really kind of no. chasing that neon rainbow? No, I'm chasing that neon rainbow. <laughs> there, come on, Alan. <laughs> now I'd love to be able to you know do a show with some of these people. Like you know, uh, I got to meet Alan uh, a bunch of years ago, and, and just you know to be able to think about uh, that I would have the opportunity to you know to share a stage with somebody like that would be uh, that would be an awesome event adventure. So. It's just, you know, uh, I was pushing, you know, always wanted to, you know, get in my vehicle or get in my truck. Of course, I've been driving trucks all my life. Grew up on the farm and grew up being a rancher, and my son and I raised cattle, and, and so we're just around that farm life and that yeah. country life all the time. And that, it, keep, and the, yeah, that keeps the content legit, it's right? It's easy to yeah. write that country music yeah, when, you, when yeah. you're living it. So. Yeah, when your boots are dirty every day, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and, you know, I always just wanted, I said, you know, it's got to be a good feeling that, to turn the radio on and see your, see your name on the radio. Being yeah. on. So that's, I guess, if you go the end game, you know, it's, uh, it's the end game. But I miss playing the live shows. Uh, like I said, I've, I've been on some big stages and got, got to play in front of lots of people in my lifetime. And, uh when you get away from it, uh, you know, you think you don't miss it, but the longer the time transpires, you, 
you start to miss it, and, and it's just, you know, my end game is to get be able to get back on that stage. Well, let me tell you this. Okay, so you've already got a story past. You've already got some highlights, some great stories. And you know what? You're brand new to me. Yeah. You know, I heard your song came across the desk. I, I, I've got one song of yours that I love. Like I said, it, it's climbing up our charts, you know, and uh, and I'm, I'm a personal new fan now. Well, that's and, great. And that's the thing. Is that you're, there's so many people out there. you still got so many potential yeah. people to turn on to that thing. Yeah. So, man, yeah. I, I admire the hustle. And the fact, like I said, you're you're strong, you're healthy, and you're willing to get out there I'm and pound yeah, the paper. Yeah, so I'm go for it. Best of luck. Let's go into your song, and we'll come back and we'll we'll do a quick wrap up here. Okay. But, uh, the song I've been bragging about, uh, you've heard it many times here on the radio station already. Uh, Steve Anthony is called C O U N T R Y. I'll give me a little backstory before we get into the song. Well, it was you know it was uh, when I th- when I thought about the story, you know, that's, there's just. Through the 90s, really, through, and, and through the 2000s, the year 2000s, there's been just so much uh, non, what I call non-country music yeah. come out of the Nashville market, mm-hmm. you know, and they, 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 they're producing this pop, and then it's becoming rap, it's becoming funk, it's becoming everything, everything but country, but country. Yeah, yeah. and so that, I said, well, you know, I, and, and that it's a fine line that you can walk because you write a song like this. And, and you can offend a lot of people right, too. Right. You, well, you're picking a side, and, and, yeah. and nobody wants and, to do that anymore. And, and yeah. not that I don't love that music because I love all that music, right, and, right, you right. know. And, and I still play a lot of those songs out of here on the radio Which just, the call, just for call fun. Spain, Spain, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for country, and it, it just they just they went outside the box right. there a little bit too well, far. Well, you know, I'm going to go so far as to say that you know Nashville disappoints me on the regular, um, oh, and not only because of the watered down country music. But you know the, the politics now. Now, yeah. now, now it used to be where, where, and this is one of the things I love about Texas. While while everybody is free to have obviously their own politics in Texas country, by at large, we kind of got a love for our God, love for family, and love for country. You yeah, know? yeah, that's pretty sure. much a. You, you could say that is a recipe for the Texas country mindset. You cannot say that about Nashville anymore yeah, at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, I, I have to worry about. Whose record I'm buying? Who I'm spending a buck twenty nine on a single for? You know, because uh, you know, I, I um, um, it's just gotten to where it's like, wow, I can't get behind you as a person. So it makes me, it's hard for me to get behind them as a musician. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and, and again, that's just my personal thing. But uh, I, I love take, I, I love it when people like you, and you know, and Alan's done it, George's done it, calling them out. You know, saying, hey, <laughs> you know, where's where's the real stuff? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's bring back the real stuff. So, yeah. so how long? Did, so you wrote this? Did you have any co-writers? Was it just no? It was just me. Yeah, just, just came. It all it all came and. Uh, it was the song was a uh, little longer, and then, of course we have to edit it for yeah. radio, and, and and the edit turned out really good. You really, you really don't miss the parts that we edited out, but uh, it, there was a little more musicianship going on with some steel guitar and some fiddle, where we had you know. And you during, can always do that in live during show, the right? solo yeah. passes. Yeah, you, know, you can always do that. So yeah. you know the radio is kind of real restrictive for, for time slot, so we just kind of made it fit into the radio space. And but but you know what? There's a method to that madness. It, it's always best to leave them wanting more. Yeah. Like when I hear a song, it's like it, it, it's a good solid, and, and when I hear it, I kind of want to hear it again. Yeah. And yeah. If, if you go, if you, there's it's a really it's a touchy thing. You could go a little, you can go thirty seconds extra, and for some people, it's like okay, I'm done. You know, and you just don't want them to to tune out. Yeah, yeah, sense. yeah. But but it's a great song. You could go another minute. Well, you know, it's, it, it, even when I wrote it, you know, because I was kind of hesitant about it because it was it kind of had the corny feel, you know, to it. <laughs> like, and I couldn't believe. And I called some friends of mine. I said, you know, I can't believe nobody's ever written this song. Right, right. C O U N T R Y. Just spell it out. Yeah. Because yeah. it all, you know, it was just a great rhyme, uh-huh. and it was something that really easy to work with. And I, and I just couldn't believe that nobody had ever written the song before. And I even looked on the, you know, like uh, when I went to copyright it, to see if there was ever a version of, of it written before. And, and of course, I couldn't find one. So it, it is a great melody. It's it's got a cool, fun groove, you know. And and, and your voice is perfect for what you're doing here, yeah. and, and the message you're conveying. So yeah, again, yeah. you have five stars for me, two thumbs up, <laughs> I, and all well, that thank stuff. You, Robert, so Robert, let's really, go and get it on. Let's check okay. it out, Steve Anthony. We're going to come back and talk to him, wrap it up here. But this I, is called C O U N T R Y. It's Steve Anthony. You can see him live today at the Briscoe Garner Museum at 333 North Park Street here in Uvalde. And we are uvalueradio.net. Climb up in my truck. Turn on the radio. Tune it to prime country. Sometimes the opera show. Got to hear some fiddle. And that steel guitar cry. You need a good reason 
Mr. Steve Anthony right here once again. Yeah, thank you so much for joining thanks. us. Uh, great song again. One of my favorites. That might make my like top ten list of the year, <laughs> the way it's going. It's just uh, it, it's kind of how I feel. It's kind of, it, it, it's got a little bit of get off my lawn, yeah. but kind of fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's some fun. In it. <laughs> so um, what what else, what's in the works, man? Uh, I know you've got some, you, you, you're one of those guys that champions the, you got CDs that you got out here for got sale today? got some CDs for sale today. So, mm-hmm. so how, how do people digest your music? You, Wait, you're streaming and CDs? Streaming, yeah. We got, we're on all the streaming sites. So you can find me on uh, steveanthonymusic.com is the website. Uh, Steve Anthony Music. Uh, we ha- I have two uh, Facebook pages and Instagram pages. Both is uh, Steve Anthony, and then one is Steve Anthony Music. So you can find me in a lot of ways on on social media. Now, real quick, we've talked about how you're, you're an elder statesman in the scene. How what is that like for a guy like you? Social media, digital age, streaming, and you've seen it all. Obviously, you know you're probably cutting demo tapes on cassette back in the day when you started off. Yeah, yeah. eight um, tracks. Yeah. <laughs> so so how how has it been watching you know decades of evolvement or arguably devolvement of the industry? What what, what are some of the highlights you can share with us? Or low lights. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's harder to, to, to see any income from this yeah. streaming industry because it's just, there's, it's just tenths of, of pennies. You know, every stream is just only a tenth of a penny. And, you know, it's, it, it's in such small fractions. So yeah. I miss the, the good old days, and, uh, but uh, I still print CDs. People like, you know, I give, yeah. a lot, I give a lot of them away. People just still like to have something in their sure, hand. Yeah. Even though they can go to their phone and, and listen to anything they want to, they, 
putting something in their hand in the choir, is, I love is, is a little... And, and you can't say you don't have a CD player. Even if you have a PS4, yeah. you can play it on that. <laughs> That's right. That's you right. Know? So. Well, Mr. Anthony, it's been a really pleasure talking to you, getting to know you here. Um, as far as any upcoming uh, any upcoming gigs or... Well, I just want to say that I have a new album coming okay. out. I've been working on this album for about a year. This is the longest that it's taken me to, to produce an album. It's taken a year and a half. So that'll be five and five, huh? Yeah, because, wow. because some of the COVID and the, uh-huh. uh, uh, back in, uh, tw- in the year 2020, mid 2020, I lost my producer, Greg Hunt. Wow. He passed away from a heart attack. Okay. And so we kind of reevaluated everything. And it's just taken us, everything is just kind of moving a little slow. Now, how long have you been working with, with Mr. Hunt? Uh, for three years. Wow. Yeah. So Greg was uh, Leanne Rhymes' producer. That's, That's, that was his claim to fame. Interesting. And yeah, so you, to you have can't guy, prepare for that kind of loss. You know, have a guy so. like that on your on uh, floating on your boat with yeah. you. I said, man, this is you know, I feel important with him, and to lose him was uh, it, it was just a real shock. And uh, uh, but uh, like I said, you know, we just pushed through it. We pushed forward. It's taking a little longer to do this album than I wanted to, but uh, got some great, great music on this on this album coming out. I'm, uh, I was kind of looking for a title for it and really didn't, wasn't figuring. Uh, so one of the songs that I wrote on this uh, is called Heart Aches and Honky Tonks. Okay. And so that's a good Texas. Yeah. I, said, yeah. Well, I, I think I'm just going to call this album Heart Aches and Honky Tonks. So well, I was going to say, you know, coming, you know, the loss of a producer, the world in such disarray from COVID. Um, did, did, did that affect the songwriting? Did, does the, or, or, or is it? Compared to your previous four, is, is there well, a it, tone it, or any it, other? It gave me some uh, incentive to write in a little different perspective, you know, mm. because the world changed overnight. Yeah, it did, uh, and, and it's it hasn't got back to normal yet, no, really. It so, really hasn't, and and so your mentality and and your thought process of how you process through days and process through thought processes. Is is it, it's just a little different nowadays. Yeah. And uh, first two or three albums, uh, I did a lot of uh, ballads and love songs, and then I got to that uh, that stage. I said, "Well, I'm going to write a I'm going to write a whole album, and I'm not going to use the word love in, wow, in, okay. in, in that whole album." That's a good personal so, challenge. Yeah, so, it was a challenge, and and uh, I think there are uh, there are a few. I, I did end up using a few love words in this uh-huh. in this new album but the uh, kind of stayed with a lot of upbeat uh, up tempo kind of stuff and stayed away from the ballads I got two ballads on I got one really great the next it's going to be the next gospel release and uh, everybody that's heard it says it's going number one it's called Mama's Endless Love okay and it, it's it's going to be a really good one so yeah it seems like you're, you're you're one of them heart heartstring tuggers yeah, right yeah yeah, so. yeah yeah so that one and uh uh, a song called Way Back When that's the other uh, ballad on the album and, and, and it really turned out to be a really cool I had that idea of, uh, of, of a title you know you always my days pass with I'm always looking for a hook line you yeah, you yeah. Always, uh, songwriters are always looking sure. for a great hook line Yeah, and, and I just came across this uh, this Way Back When hook line I'll play it today and, and the uh, studio version is just uh, it, it's just going to be a great song it's just it's just it's one of those great country songs judging from it's, what I've already heard from you I, I cannot wait to hear whatever and, and speaking of your other material um, be sure and tune in to Gospel Brunch we do it every Sunday morning here on UvaldeRadio.net we're going to have some of your gospel stuff yeah, on this week too thank, so. I think Helen uh, emailed uh, yeah. the stuff to you today so right? we're so. looking forward to putting that in rotation maybe uh, maybe we'll be the ad that puts you up to number one next there week you go. So. I'd like to see uh, He Is Right is a really really good okay. So, and I wrote that song for when Greg passed away about three months after he passed away. I said, you know, I got to do something that's a tribute to him. He was such a great man and, and, and such a spirit. He was really a spiritual man. Yeah. And and he gave me extra strength in my spiritual life. And uh, so after three months, I, I wrote this song called He Is Right. And, and and I was fortunate enough that it made it to number one too. That's on, fantastic. On that gospel well, chart, we're going to get so. the catalog stuff in. We'll put the Thanks. new stuff in, and we we are Steve Anthony fans for life well, now. Here at ValleyRadio.net. <laughs> so again, uh, y'all find it at SteveAnthonyMusic.com. Right? SteveAnthonyMusic.com. Stream website. 
better yet, come see him live today here um, on the porch at the Briscoe Garner Museum. Buy a CD, get an autograph, shake his hand, and man, thank you so much. Any parting thoughts, plugs that you need to well, get out there? Thank you, Robert, for having me, and uh, y'all keep listening to that uvalleyradio.net. I mean, that's that's where it's happening at. Y'all are, <laughs> y'all are the people that uh, you know do the groundwork for me and make it happen for me. It so. is our honor and pleasure. Thank well, you. Pleasure spending this time. I really appreciate you doing that. So. All right, that's going to wrap it up here at the Briscoe Garden Museum. We're going to come back a little bit later with Gareth Alamantes, but now you can come over here and check out some live music on the porch with uh, currently on stage right now or on the porch, James Garland, and then we've got uh, Steve Anthony coming up next. This is UvaldeRadio.net resuming our regular programming. The most Texas country and red dirt, plus the best of Nashville from 90s to now. I'm on my way to you Baby, I love you like I love country music Uvalde Radio Uvalde Radio All right, Uvalde Radio <laughs> It's Robert Miguel. We are live at the Briscoe Garden Museum wrapping up music on the porch at 333 North Park Street. I would invite you to come out here and enjoy some great Texas country music, uh, some free refreshments, and a uh, good afternoon of edutainment. We had entertainment. We had education. Uh, it was a good time at the, at the Briscoe Garden. It's all over. It's said and done now. But we had a fantastic day, man. We had James Garland perform. We had some uh, ladies from the Uvalde High School Choir. They kicked it all off. Steve Anthony just tore it up, man. We had a little bit of everything, including some local flavor, a rising star of the the area. With me right now, who just put on a fantastic show. We're going to get into his busy, busy day here in a moment. But I've got the young, talented, and kind of ruggedly handsome for, for his age, Mr. Garrett Thalamontes. Yes, hey! All right. It it's the G1 Rodeo Show, bro. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, so, yeah. so speaking of rodeo shows, wow, you've, you've been working today, man. Hustling, yes, right? Sir. So give me give me the story of how your day has been so far. What 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 give me give me your itinerary so far and what what's happening later. All right. So so far, I had a football game last night. We played we played in Heverville and uh, about 2 hours away, so came back, got home about midnight <sighs> and then had to drive all the way to your valley for to to stay the night for the rodeo this morning. And so didn't end up going to bed until maybe three or something like that. <laughs> Woke up at eight this morning, had the meeting at nine, um, and then wrote my calf right before I came over here. And I got I got second place, didn't too, do too bad, and um, came and played the show. And now I'm here talking to you. And you're going to be coming going back to the rodeo. Yes, sir, right? I, I still got a rope. I, I still got a team rope. Yes, so sir. so so if I may also just kind of elaborate, I was talking to your dad slash manager, uh, and and he said that you know normally these rodeos start a little later, but you had a meeting prior, mm-hmm. so it got you off to a later start, yes, and then you went what toward towards the end, right? You yes, had to perform it. Oh, so yeah, <laughs> and, you, and you guys showed you showed up here in sweat, you know what I mean? Just kind of oh, yeah. like just and you pretty much went straight on, man. Oh yeah. So kudos. That's sometimes that's the way show business is, right? Yes, so and you're relatively new to this whole thing. So yes, uh, that's uh, that's performing under pressure, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I tell you what, even even in radio land, showing up, hooking up and then having to go on before you have a chance to really kind of slow down and reset and get your bearings. That's part of the business, right? Yes, so, sir. have you have you uh, have you ever had any kind of a hurry up and go shows like oh, this? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So, what, what's been the worst one so far? I mean, because uh, you you yeah, you to listen like a champion. Yes, well, sir. What, what's what's the crazy experience you've had jumping on stage? I'd have to say, um, one time we were we were playing in Concan, and we were pretty late for some reason. Is that the hippie, hippie chicks? Show? Yes, they're yeah. at hippie chicks. They're fantastic, and they're, they're they're real they're yeah. real nice people, real lenient. But you know, we, we like we like to be early to everything yeah. we go to, and so um, we were real late for some reason. And so we, when we got there, we we set up. I think in about five minutes. I think that's probably the fastest we've ever set up. Yeah, and got right on the stage and started the show. Bam! Five minutes, huh? That's oh, yeah. good. Now, don't, don't be talking about that too much because people expect it from you all the time. That's crazy. Again, we got Gareth Alamantes here, the uh, young man from Carrizo, yes, and uh, football. So, how's the football team, man? Everything good? Uh, we are one and two right now. Um, last last night was our first game that we won. I think, if uh, I'm not mistaken, we played you guys a couple yes, of weeks yes, here yes, in Uvalde, yes, and you guys came. You went full out for Uvalde, yes. so uh, we would like to take this opportunity um, as you know somebody in the community here to thank you guys yes, for showing up, marooning out, and oh, yeah. you know doing all you can to support you know, our community. And you know we're all close enough to where you guys felt the repercussions of what happened here locally yes, in Uvalde too, as well, right? 
Um, so again, just thank you, you know, on behalf of the UCISD and, and our whole community. But but yeah, so the, so the team, you got a W, huh? Yes, sir, we did. Very good. But man, so so we've talked about this before. You are a, a rising recording artist, you know, performer, football player, rodeo guy. You even do some some of your own kind of YouTube and you know, cr- uh, content creation, whatnot. Yes, sir. How do you do it, man? I mean, you are, are you you're gonna have a heart attack at like thirty? <laughs> <laughs> to be his, honest, mom, his mom and I were like, no, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I've just always liked being kind of around people in, in, in uh-huh. the center of attention. I've, I've always liked recording videos, making little skits, um, always liked singing. And I think it all just comes naturally to me. Um, some, it, it gets tough sometimes. Right, like, right. like last night, for example, having to come back from the football game right. to the rodeo in early morning. But. Um, I mean, it's it's just what what I do, and, so and I, I feel like you know you're you got you got a good uh, support system. It oh, seems yeah. like your family's really behind you, yes, and I think that if you start young, you know, um, being able to show up, perform, do your thing, you know, you're, you're training yourself. At a, you like I said, you've already got so much going on. I, I would argue that you've got more going on than a lot of grown adults, you know, and living a more responsible adulting life. I, I don't even like using that word, but it's a, it's a thing now. But, uh, man, I mean, for your origin again, how old are you? 16, 16. 16 years old, my man. So uh, it's fantastic. And it just it's so cool to think about what you've already accomplished and how much you how much time you still got. You know, if I, if I, you, know, you ask any man my age, if we knew what we, you know, if we knew what we knew now and we could go back at 16, you'd, you'd make a whole lot of different decisions. So um, let's go and talk about the support system. I, I, like I said, I, I, I talk to your dad a lot, you know, uh, and it, as far as your music and, and what you're doing here, um, elaborate on how, how the family unit helps your blossoming career. Okay, so it's kind of like all in brackets here. So my <laughs> My mom's... They've all got roles and jobs, right? Yeah. (laughs) So my mom is the one that wakes me up every morning, makes sure I'm on time. My dad, too. Uh, My dad's the one one that sets everything up, makes sure sure that I'm I'm ready to go. And uh, he's the one that's always giving me advice. Uh, back to my mom uh, when she's when she's waking me up in the morning. I don't want to wake up. Then she starts getting the spray bottle and spraying water in my face Ooh, for school. And, that's old school. Oh yeah, I love that. Yeah. And so she she's she's always on top of me for being on time, and so is my dad. And I feel that that's why that's why I'm always trying to be on time. I do my best. I'm not always I'm not the best at being on time all the time. But, but hold on, in your defense, you got a lot going on. Yes, sir. You know, so yes, sir. That, that that's part of the equation as well, too. Yes, sir. It's easy to be on time when you got nothing going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. So who who else comes into play? Is that your sister over there? No, that's her girlfriend. No, no, no. No, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> and cousin and uncle, I mean. <laughs> she's my she's my friend. He's your friend. Okay, okay. I get it now. All right. All right. So I just want to see what else, who else the support system is. So pretty much mom and dad, right? Yes, sir. So uh, now how, how long have you guys been doing this this football rodeo country music thing? We've been we've been doing rodeo since I was five years old. Yeah. And then football came into the picture uh, around seventh grade. And so we had to, that's when we had to start balancing our time yeah. between football and rodeo. And then sometime around sixth grade, seventh grade is when I started doing music. And so uh, that's when things really started to pick up, and we had to start figuring out ways to balance everything out and all that good stuff. I, I think I've asked you this kind of before, but if there's, if there's a hierarchy, if there's like a total pole of priority with what you're doing, um, what is that as far as these projects, whether it's school, music, rodeo? What, you know, if somebody came to you and said, hey, we want to sign you and send you to Nashville, would you drop the rodeo? Or if they said, we want to take you on this rodeo circuit, you know, from, you know, what, how, are, are is there kind of a decided um, ranking system with all the things you've got going on? So no, no matter what, um, it's, it's the way it's always been since I started doing everything that I'm doing. But school is always first, mm-hmm. of course. And I've been told before that, at one point, I'm going to need to choose between rodeo and music. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I just, I, I don't think I could choose. Well, you're still I, young. I, you can still. Well, I am, but yeah. it's good to think about the future. But I, I just don't think I could. My my the, my roots in in rodeo are way too deep, and music is just something that I love to do, mm. and rodeo is too. And I, I've been doing rodeo since I was a little kid, and just this year I was elected as president of the Texas High School Rodeo Association. And so 
um, just my rodeo family and all the people that I've been able to meet with rodeo, I mean, it's going to stick with me forever and I don't right. think I could ever let it go. Sounds like that's really in your heart. Yes, sir. That's, that's awesome, man. Well, man, it, it, it's good to see you just firing all cylinders. And we really, again, I cannot explain to you enough how much I appreciate you having this cold, crazy weekend hustle, getting on the show, helping us out. And, of course, uh, I can say thank you as well from the Briscoe Garner Museum. Uh, it was a pleasure seeing your set. I We've been we've been kind of working together here and there, but this is the first time I got to see you. Yes, it just hasn't worked out. So it's always... It's always a great feeling when you're playing somebody's song on the radio and you haven't seen them live and you finally see them and you go, okay, they're the real deal. <laughs> because every now and again, you know, somebody that, somebody does some studio magic and they can't really yeah. pull it off live. Yes. But it was it was really cool to know that I – and I've heard enough testimonials about your show that, that, that I know. I've seen some video. But uh, it really isn't the same until you see them, see them live. So yes. seeing you with a high-pressure gig like that is, is fantastic. <laughs> so thank you again uh, for being here. Let's go talk about the new single. Cruising along, it's doing really well in our local chart on uvalderadio.net, and I know you've got a few stations out there as well playing it. Um, second single um, after oh, yeah. the the first one was um, Southern Land. Southern Land, great song. So uh, let's talk about the recording of the music, uh, the writing of the songs, and what what the plans are as far as putting those to radio or to streaming or just getting them out there to, for your fans. So for the new single, um, I came up with the chords first. And I started coming up with the, the melodies and um, that little hum part that I do throughout the song. And when I was writing the lyrics, I, I wanted it to be a song that people could listen to just driving down the road, yeah. doing cruising, cruising along, you know. And so um, I feel like that kind of ideal helped me write the lyrics a lot. And as, as far as Southern Land goes, I think that's, that was kind of, kind of an ode to, to my to my great grandpa mm-hmm. who who worked the land that we live on right now and 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 ranched on there. And so but both of those songs are really really important to me, really special to my yeah. heart. Um, especially Southern Land and um, sometimes sometimes when I'm in school and my my friends at school are also really big support system for me as mm-hmm. well. Okay. And uh, they listen to my music and it's it's just real special to me when I get to hear my friends talk about how much they like the songs yeah and um, I mean as far as recording the songs we, we work with Weston Whips and Hondo Texas Weston my man yes sir well, he, he, is, he, yeah. he was a great help he is an amazing producer um, I, I love Weston to death um, he, he helps me he, he helps me brainstorm ideas get, get ideas for different sounds in the songs um and he was he's just always been he is really big. coming into his own as a producer with his own kind of sound and yes. his, putting, putting his own spin on other people's stuff so uh, yeah I, I love what he does too and I, 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 I was tickled when I heard that you guys are working together it made, it made me real happy it's just as a person who knows you both you know yes. so uh, yeah the, the recording sound great but let me say this um, as great as the engineering and the recording is um, hearing especially uh, cruising along I, I Really, when you played it out there on the porch, just you and the guitar, and something about the subtlety of, you know, when you take the guitar break and you let your voice kind of, you know, it, you really, really feel the cruise in, the kind of chill element that, that I think the song is about, you know, just that, that whole in your own head, in yeah. your own zone, you know, highway ahead, you know, and um, I really, it, it really kind of, um, I like it when music takes you someplace, and and it really resonated with me d- during the live performance. So that's a fantastic um, thing. Feet when you can strip down, just you and the guitar, and it can be even more impactful. So again, nothing, nothing away from what Weston does or the recording process. It's a, it's a great you know song, but I, I think that uh, really great songs when you strip them down and they sound just as good or better, then it's fantastic. So kudos, kudos to for putting that song together. What else is in the future? What other new songs are are you working on? Is there a record in the in the future? What's the What's the plans there? I do not yet know what we are going to do <laughs> in the future. I have, I've written a lot more songs, and uh, I, I just don't know which one I would like to put out first in front of before everything else. Mm-hmm. I would like to release an album after I get a few more singles out, mm-hmm. but that's we're talking maybe a year. A year ahead. So. Right, right. Well, you're a busy guy, yeah, yes, and you got plenty of time. So, yes, yeah, don't, don't hurry. So, so do you have like, and I think I might have asked this before, but is there like a five year plan or like a do, do you and, and the parents have like 
um, just a set of goals that you'd like to, you know, accomplish over the next few years as you headed to college or as you headed to whatever is next after after high school? Me and my dad have talked a lot about um, about choosing which songs I want to uh-huh. put out and and what what I'm going to do as, as I get because I'm a junior now, so yeah. I have this year and the next year, and then I'm off to college, and so. As, as far as what we're going to do music-wise, we kind of have, have an idea of what we're going to do. Um, as far as, like, gigs and, and playing live, I'm, I'm looking to go to College Station. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I know that College Station, I've been told by several people that College Station is a really good place for, for live music. Right, yeah. And so... You can get an education and you can have a place to gig on the weekends. Yes, sir, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so sure. so I've, I've kind of put some thought into that, but... I mean, there's not a set plan uh, on what we're going to do, but we have a good idea. And I don't mean to come, come off like a guidance guy yeah. counselor. Here, you know, so <laughs> just just want to make sure you know, see see what the plans are. Again, we're talking to Gareth Alamantas here out of uh, Carrizo here in Uvalde doing a, a great show. Thank you, for again, for the uh, the past shows of Broadway 3. I've done our Friday Night Live showcase. Uh, I know. Uh, go and give us a, a quick rundown on if, if somebody missed you today, uh, some of the hot spots. Some of your regular hangs that you, you, you we can find you locally in the, in the region area. Well, we, we usually play around U Valley. We play in Concan uh, at Hippie Chicks. I don't believe they're going to be um, open anymore this year. Okay. Um, they they reopen in the spring next year, but they right. should they, they should have the bar open. Um, I think. Huh? Oh yes, that's right. Um, You'll be in Honda at the maze, we'll be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, at the corn maze in Honda. So shout out to Ken and Lori, they're great people, and you know, Weston plays out there as well too. Yes. Sir. So yeah. And then we also play in Green a whole lot too. Right, right. And uh, we'll be playing there this weekend. And if y'all ever want to to find our, look at our calendar, uh, go to g1radioshow.com social media calendar all that good stuff is on there you know as far as those green dates I mean that's a cool place to be playing music oh, because yeah. of the history um, and the respect for, for true uh, traditional and Texas country that they've got there uh, and, and again let's go ahead and talk about because we haven't really talked about it I've kind of been assuming here but but for a young man your age you're you got an old school you, you know your whole thing is very classic country um, let's go ahead and talk about real quickly about the influences and, and what was what was it that your mom and dad were exposing you to what were you listening to that, that helped craft your sound well like you said I'm, I'm mainly classic country but I, I don't really like to stick to classic country I like to play songs all over the board and uh, I feel like my, the music that my parents introduced me to when I was little kind of helped me out with, yeah. with all that other stuff that I kind of use to spice to add a little spice in there and uh, but as far as the classic country goes I feel like um, listening to Willie's Roadhouse when I was little mm, okay. re- really, really helped with that because uh, one day we were on our way to cafe open practice and I was just thumbing through the radio and Willie's Roadhouse came on and I heard that, that music, that classic country, that uh-huh. Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, all that good stuff. And I fell in love with it, and so that's just what I love to play. And um, I, I love a lot of the new stuff as well, and I like some 90s rock, 80s rock, 70s rock, all that good stuff. I like Spanish music. And so I'm, I'm kind of just all over the board with all of that. And that's a good way to be, you know, yes. and you can pull a little bit of flavor and spice from all that stuff that, that you, and again, you're young, so, you know, you come from a, you know, my generation and maybe even your parents a little bit, you know, we were kind of, we were kind of told or that you kind of had to pick a genre, so to speak, you know, and some people kind of went through trends here and there, but you're, you're this Spotify generation, the Pandora generation, where y'all's playlists can be, you know, thug and rap and the country and the new wave and pop and retro and, you know, you. So we don't we don't really focus on format like we used to. It used to be like if you're a rocker, you listen to the rock station about rock albums, you wore the black t shirt, and that's what it was. If you're a country, you you know you wore ropers, and you know, and and, and that's the way it was. But uh, now everybody's uh, it's it's cool to be more diverse in your musical selection and the playlist. And uh, and I think that your generation is is lucky that you can you can actually be 
per, influenced by those things, and it can it can reflect in your music. That's that's really yes. fantastic. Uh, so uh, but we're gonna play your song, man. We're running a little late here. I know the Briscoe wants to close. Um, so again, Gareth Alamantas here. The new song is called Cruising Along. Uh, we'll go and wrap it up here. Tell us again uh, the, the website and the next couple of things we need to look out for you for. G One Radio Show dot com. You can find my calendar, social media, all that good stuff. I will be playing at Broadway eight thirty in October. Um, like I said, y'all can go to my calendar to find the exact date. Okay. And, uh, yeah. All right. G1RodeoShow.com, right? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, find them on Facebook and YouTube and all that good stuff. And, and again, I have to mention this again. You literally showed up, you know, in your, with your rodeo, with your number, rodeo on, still in your back, man. Yep. And, and all the other guys were playing. Was, I was like, that's legit. I mean, like, we showed up. In the middle of a rodeo, did you, and you're going back. So, oh, yeah. Uh, so you got some some credibility, some credo for these other Texas country guys that are around here. <laughs> so uh, we're going to wrap it up here at the Briscoe Garner Museum. Thanks again, uh, Gareth Alamantis. Here's a new song. It's called Cruising Along, and this is UvalentyRadio.net. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Radio.net, live at the Briscoe Barnum Museum, cruising along that Gareth Alamantis here, uh, gentleman, young, young man out of uh, Carrizo, wrapped up music on the porch here at the Briscoe Garden Museum. I've got the director here of the museum, Miss Rochelle. Run you. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, we gotta yeah, make sure. That's right. uh, so, Rochelle, how was your music on the porch event? How did it feel? It was good. It was. We had a really good time. A lot of really good music today. If you weren't here, you missed out. Yeah, it was a good time. Who was your favorite performer? Be honest. It's okay. I'm not going to tell these guys. My favorite? Who would you like? Did anybody resonate with you? I like all of them. They all yeah. played a little something different. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. A little variety of stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you say, who was your favorite? Who would you really like? I liked all of them. Okay. <laughs> I liked the, the UCISD choir girls. I liked James Gardner. I liked Steve Anthony. And I liked Garrett Tellemann. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a little bit of everything. Yeah. And what's interesting is that, so Garrett's like 16. Yes. And then you got James Garland, who's kind of probably 20 something, 30, you know. And then you got uh, Steve Anthony, who's kind of mm-hmm. an old elder statesman of, of music. So it was a good variety of, of different generations, but all doing some really good country and Texas And I've got country. to say, yeah. Garrett. Coming straight from a rodeo, <laughs> broke his horse, came here, performed with us, and just to take off and go back to the rodeo. How Texas is that? It's it does so not crazy. get any more. We're talking about he that. got all his country credibility right there, man. Yes, jumped yes. off a horse, came here, still had his number on his back. That's right. Played, he did. A, played a thirty minute set, and now yeah. he's going back to the back rodeo to after rodeo. doing an interview. So that is just uh, totally again, Texas. Another shout out to all the artists that uh, were involved today. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be a part of this and uh, oh, share, you. you know, in, in bringing some great artists. Uh, to the community. Um, tell us a, a quick rundown about uh, upcoming events at the, at the yes. Briscoe Garden Museum and, and what people are missing. Sure. Um, well, our next big event here at the museum is on Halloween. We have a Monster Mesh on October 31st. A Monster Mesh. Monster Mesh. <laughs> it'll be a, it'll be a Kids, graveyard smash. Yes, it will. <laughs> Kids can come here for games and, and crafts and prizes and, of course, toys. And I'll have a costume contest that night as well. Um, then in November, it is Cactus Jack's birthday month. So we have two events going on in November. Um, we have a painting class here on the 12th, and they'll be painting a cactus. It does, reservations are required for that. And then okay. you just give us a call here at the museum and we'll get you on the list, because class size is limited. And we have the open house for Garner's birthday on the 19th, and the Sahawis will be helping us celebrate that day. And we'll have his gavels on display, and we'll also have a collection of quilts from the, our Winedale collection. And then we'll finish up the year with our Christmas open house, our gingerbread gala. Ooh. Yeah. Which I came up with that myself. Thank That's you, awesome. thank you. Rare moment of creativity. It'll be um, the second Saturday of December. I believe that's the ninth, but don't quote me. Well, you guys are ripping and raring now, man. Yeah. I know we've had some downtime in, yeah. in the recent uh, past, yes, so it's good to see you guys. Uh, and I, I know you're bragging about your 2023 calendar. Yes, already we have, stacking up. We right? have some exciting stuff. So make awesome. sure you follow our Facebook page. So follow my Facebook. Is there? Uh, and then of course you guys are at the uh, Briscoe Center website. Yes. So yes. for some official information mm-hmm. as well too. All right. Well, Rochelle, thank you so much again for for. Uh, Letting us spend the afternoon here with some music and uh, some great history lessons and whatnot. So, I guess we're going to wrap it up here. Again, we've been live at the Briscoe Garner Museum. I don't care if you came here in your fifth grade tour, come back again and see the Briscoe Garner. There's always something new, right? That's right. And uh, I'm Robert Miguel. It's going to wrap it up here. Back to our regular programming on uvaldiradio.net.